Welcome to What A Week podcast, where we talk about the things that you should have heard about this week. I'm James Messer, and I am joined this week, as always, by my co-host, Judy Messer. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome. We are we are less than 10 minutes late this week with our podcast. and Which is on time. It's not on time. It means that we're 10 minutes late. No, it's on time. It's 10-minute <laughs> window. I, I'm not sure 10-minute window. Now, when you have a meeting... If you're if you're going to a meeting, usually I'll set up a conference call with someone, and we'll do a conference call. We have the 15 minute rule, sort of like the 15 oh, minute professor. So you rule. have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. We have like an extra five in there for I someone like to show up. And if they don't show up after 15, you know, you send an email. Sorry, we missed you. That time kind is of very thing. relative. Is it? Yes. So our podcast is a 10 minute rule. I think so. Okay. Well, I'm fine with that. We should probably just set that up. If everybody else gets 15, we should get 10. Okay. <laughs> we can arrange that. It's been a good week. You know, one of the things that's happened this week, and it happened this morning, is um, my parents got iPhones. Now, my parents have... Which they, is amazing. They, they used to have the flip phone, right. you know, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I thought they would always be a candidate for a what they call the feature phone these days, which is to say it's not a smartphone. It just has the numbers on it, and that's it. It's just a phone. It just calls just a phone. People. But now they're going on a they're going on a um, overseas. They're going to go on a trip. They wanted a phone that could at least work over there. Um, they, one of the things they were talking about when working with their phone is uh, they needed it for it to to call people. And then I showed them Skype. I went over and did a training session with my parents <laughs> and showed them Skype. Now my mom's texting me. All the time. And using text lingo. Oh, yes. Little... She's ahead of my mom because up until a few years ago, my mom was still using <laughs> that big, like, 10-pound phone from right. 1992. Right. Yeah. Those are awesome. Wow. She still have that? That would be great. No, I, I don't think she kept it. Yeah. Although it would be funny. You always see that when you're watching, like, an old show <laughs> and they pick up their phone and it's this big behemoth. Or it's, it's a, a two-hand flip... job. I was yeah. watching the, uh, the, the West Wing and they had the flip phones. They were flipping them closed. I think nobody has flip phones and well that's not true I, i'm in airports and people still have flip phones but it's not well back when we had the gigantor phones yes only super rich people had small right phones like if you were had a small phone you were rich the you motorola. were like a doctor a lawyer a president something it right. was that motorola phone oh, yeah it was like a thousand dollars yes it was it so expensive out. it was right. crazy my dad was a cop as you know and the Gigantor phone was as big as his policeman walkie-talkie. Right. Which is a weapon, by the way. I guess you could beat a criminal with it well, if you can't call people. This was in Miami, so sure. And the phone, <laughs> he would sit them together, and they were both the same size. Wow. I know. Scary. But your parents were doing amazing, and they love yeah. it. They well, love it. My mom my mom sent me a text this week and said, uh, your father's iMessage is not working. It's only going through via SMS. What's the problem? I, what? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Just did, become a technician overnight. How did that happen? <laughs> I said, maybe he's got the wrong software. I don't know. Well, we'll upgrade it. Okay. You do that. Did you show them how to get the emoticons? I don't think so. Your mom will I'm have not fun an, with that. I'm not an emoticon person. Send you smiley faces. That's why I like to send them to you. I know. That's why you like to send them to me. <laughs> Before we get into, I have, a, I have a number of great stories this week for what a week. Um, but there was, there was one we were talking about last night that I found pretty interesting. This is one you found on Yahoo. Um, and I didn't really write it up as an official what a week story, but it kind of came to mind today. This is one that is your walk away number. Uh, this story was so fascinating to me. This was a Yahoo story uh, on Yahoo.com in their news where they talk about if you could had to walk, if, if you will go, how much money would you need to walk away from your job? For a year. For, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it says here. It says oh, for, it's for a, a year. year. Right. So you, you walk away from your job. You don't work for a year. How much money would you need? Which, that, I think about, I mean, we talk about that all the time. Right. I guess everybody who works for a living thinks about that. I would not like to work, please. How much money would that be? I was going to say, forget a year. How about the rest of my life? Right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a different number. It's a different kind of problem. And they, <laughs> they talk about how much that would be. And they have interviews with people like, uh, like Cameron, who's 24, who's a barista, who says, $47,000, I am out of here. I am vapor. I am history. I am Memorex. I'm sorry, but I think that is a stressful job. The I try to be so nice to people when I'm getting coffee. Yeah, I think it's really stressful when it gets busy and people have all these different combinations they want in their coffee and they get very testy. She, she's awesome. She's 24, has four people in her house yeah. and says, oh, yeah, 47K, I'm out of here. See ya from a barista. 
So that that was remarkable. And they have others in here, like small business owner Kim Jacobs Walker in Austin, Texas, eighty four thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. She figured it out to the dollar. I'm surprised there's not She's right. That's a small business owner right there. Do you know what I found very interesting about this article, though? Across the board, it seems like really no matter the dollar amount and what line of work they're in, the number one thing they want to do is spend more time with their family. It's always the joke you always hear when the politician has to leave office to spend more time with their family. But, <laughs> but for the rest of us, it's actually quite true. Yeah. I mean, it's very interesting that they don't want to go crazy. They're not looking to buy a lot of material things. They really want to be able to just have all this free time with their family. Right. That's I'm, interesting. I'm fine with that. It's a thing I think people don't have. I know we struggle with the same thing. Sure. I mean, yep. you're just busy and I'm lucky that the, the Messer Studio studio is at my house. Right. So that I can walk out and have dinner with everyone and then walk back into the cave and work on videos or whatever <laughs> right. it is. Um but but at any time, some a kid can run in and go, Can you help me with this? I don't understand the math. I right, have, you to, have to stop and go somewhere. I have to build a nuclear reactor for a project this weekend. <laughs> so one of for those things grade. for test right. grade. <laughs> one of those things will happen. I found it a great story. So I'm gonna put the uh, the link to that in the show notes. I found some of these are seven hundred and fifty thousand. Cheryl in Charlotte, North Carolina needs three hundred thousand. Okay, this story scroll up for just a second. The story from this lady here, Cheryl Williams, was very interesting because she's already had this experience where she had money that just came to her. She got $125,000 that they inherited when her husband's mother passed away. Wow. And a lot of people think that's just incredible. Look, that's a, that's that a amount life-changing of amount of money. Right. But she talks about they were so unprepared for it, and they paid off their bills, which was great. Mm -hmm. But then they, they got very anxious because they just did not know what to do with all of this, and they ended up spending and going back into debt. You know, the money Back just kind of came were. and went, right? That, I'm going to have to follow up on this. There was a story that was done very early on in the Florida lottery that, that I think it was 10 years after they went back and looked at. I think it was a story from the Miami Herald in their weekend section. They have that, uh, I forget the name of their weekend uh, magazine that they put in the Sunday paper. But I think it went oh, back. Oh, Tropic. The Tropic yeah, magazine. Yeah, we used to read Dave Barry in that. That's he was right. Great. So, uh, <laughs> And they went back over the 10 years and looked at the people who had won and told the story about what had happened. And this is a common occurrence. Yeah. When they, you get that massive amount of money and you it's just It's overwhelming. If you weren't planning on it or prepared for it or you didn't work for it, you know, it just suddenly comes at you. This is a challenge I'm happy to take care of. If somebody was to- <laughs> Yeah, I would like over, the opportunity to be overwhelmed by a lot of money. I'd be fine with that. I'll take it. Absolutely. I'm ready, by the way. I have a plan. Do you? Oh, yeah. Uh, we haven't really talked about your plan. What's your what's your plan about? I have the a third, a third, a third plan. A third, you just absolutely lock up tight. Right. In, you know, padlocks somewhere. Yes. Then there's a third that you take and you pay some bills, you put towards college, all these important things. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third of it. Yes. You Shoes. Can, you can have a lot of fun. Okay. Oh, listen, if it's a lot, if it's lottery money, shoes are, that's, that's. <laughs> That's the little league. <laughs> We're gonna go pro. <laughs> of course we are. It's gonna be a shiny car with a lot of chrome. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's you know we were just talking about um, the the phones uh, that that my parents have. So I thought it'd be good to start off with a story of what a payphone. There's something you don't see very often anymore is payphones. Yeah, do they even have payphones? There, there are some still around, I yes. I've never seen them. Well, it's because they're there for people to make long distance calls so that they can charge you $20 a minute. There is there is a scam somehow mm -hmm. associated and with Superman, this. And Superman, he needs a place to change. There's so. nowhere to change, though. They, they don't have, have a... It. There's no police box. There's no blue... You're not in a little... Like you a, aren't. Like the British telephone. But this talks about this, the days of, like in 1990, this is a story from Diamond Hoggers, which is a baseball website. And it talks about, in 1990, the only thing that you had to be able to hear the scores of what was going on in baseball was you would call a payphone that was near the stadium that, from the payphone, you could see the, the scoreboard. And what they would do, this is, this is the, the, the old school, this is how you do it if you don't have an internet. So what they had was these big lists of phone numbers 
And they had it set up so that each phone, it would tell you this one has a clear view of the scoreboard, this one has a partial view, and this one has a restricted view. And you call these numbers. Like in Atlanta, if you called this number, it, a payphone would ring, and that payphone had a clear view of the scoreboard. And you would hope for a stranger to pick up the phone so you could ask them. Are you kidding me? Can you see what the score is for me right now? <laughs> <laughs> Some random person would Just a walk random by. Person. Oh, yeah, I can see it. It's uh, four to two. <laughs> that is hilarious. Plus, you didn't have unlimited calling back in 1990. You had to pay. So they'd talk really fast. I guess. Hurry up for my 25 cents. Is that? Right. You know, you had to pay long distance charges or whatever. Maybe if you were in Atlanta, it wouldn't cost you anything to call down to And hopefully Fulton it was an County. honest person <laughs> who didn't, like, mess with you. No, it's uh, it's the, the baseball players. It's a... Uh, the baseball scoring. It's uh, and oh, they so had like a, a code there. Yeah, I guess so, but it's for all of these cities, and you could call. And they had big lists. I've of never them. heard of this. And they they had these phone checklists. I would love this as a kid. When we were little, we used to call time. Well, Do you remember the, the time th- sure. lady? You could call and get the time. It would always be a bank. Call the bank for all of your home <laughs> banking needs. The current time is twelve. 41. <laughs> the temperature is 44 degrees. If we had known about this number, this would have been great. Yeah, we just called it. Hey, what's the score? We call, and then my parents what's would get name? angry. What's your name? Where are you from? No. I know. Who's what, been calling? What you wearing? <laughs> I don't think that's what it was for. But even uh, even at look at the, the one in Toronto, no incoming calls. They were already already clued in to, to the kids. Certain pay phones would not accept incoming calls, and they'd configure that one for. I've never heard calls. of that in my whole life. Isn't that awesome? I've never heard of it. So forget this whole internet smartphone. And my parents actually, my mom said, you know, we're going to be gone. We're going to miss some games. Um, I, I have my iPhone. If I take it, if I put it in airplane mode and only use the Wi-Fi, will I get charged for looking up anything on the Internet? So we were having a conversation about that, which, of course, again, surprised me amazingly. But she wanted to get scores when she was. She's using that phone. Oh, yeah. She's I think that's fantastic. Around. I really do. She is not messing around. So that, that was an interesting uh, jump back to the, the days of old and being able to figure out what just what the score is. Now we just take it for granted. Oh, it's right here. It's on my phone. It's instant. We have everything. Weather, yeah. maps. We have every, nobody's we, happy. We are spoiled. We should, there's, <laughs> I tell the kids, when we were little, the big cool thing was a video phone. Oh, yeah. That was always in the news. And we went into the sharper image. I don't even know. I think I was maybe 13, right. something like that, which was very recently. And... <laughs> It was like $2,000, and it wasn't really a phone. It was sort of set up if somebody lived close to your house. Right. They could have one, and you could have one. It looked like a small television. It was black and white. It was very grainy. And my friend and I were playing with that. We're like, can you imagine? That's like out of a movie. But the fact that we have FaceTime on our phone is unbelievable. Video Skype. Incredible. You've got anything you want, video, audio. You really wonder what's next. We're streaming podcasts live to the world from... A $99 camera and a computer you can pick up at Best Buy. I can't wait till we can transport ourselves places, like on Star Trek. Well, we'll have to work on that. There you go. Get cracking, Professor. All right. I'm on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get started on that immediately. That'll be next episode. <laughs> the, then you the, can retire. The next story, what a castle. I like where that's going. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not a castle like for us. I guess if all that money showed up, we could perhaps consider get transporter it. transporter popping. This was a story this week from Mail Online. I love the United Kingdom and their stories. They brought out the castle of Hogwarts that was used in the movies. They built this castle just for the first movie, and they used the same model. They actually used a model. It wasn't oh, CGI. Incredible. So I thought it was CGI. I did, too. I just assumed it was not real. But no, it was absolutely real. Let's let's have a look at the absolutely real, if I can find the right. Are they going to put this on display somewhere? Well, they have. The problem with this is it's enormous. <gasps> that is amazing. And to give you an idea of scale. <gasps> look at it. It's huge. It is huge, the size of this thing. It's enormous. And it's quite remarkable what they were able to do to oh, make this work. beautiful. I can't believe over at Harry Potter World. They haven't tried to figure out how to get it at, over. At there. Harry Potter World. Isn't that what they call it over at Universal? <laughs> Maybe that is. Potterland. But I don't think it's Potterland. They do have a video. Let's see if this, this will play. Whoa. Let's try to make that something we can all see. That's a good intro. We ought to think about that. 
I mean, the, this is a time lapse. Here's we built it kind of thing. Oh, that is unbelievable. What an amazing amount of work went into this. And the story, you should really go back and look at the story because there was a number of real life things that they were able to pattern this. It's gorgeous. Yeah, this was well done. So just a, another idea of things to, to, to consider. Well, it looks like you can take a tour. Can you take a tour? Yeah. I don't know if they were going to have to move it over to the Harry Potter world <laughs> or not. I really think that's what it's called. The, uh, they talk about Studio Tour London. So maybe they are going to set it up in the tour so you could see it. Why wouldn't you? If you had the... Oh, the, I would go to that. Would you see? <laughs> this, this is why they would set it up on a tour. I am fascinated by that. Like whenever we go somewhere that has like a mini choo-choo train village with little people <laughs> right. and cars and houses and dugs, I think that is incredible. Look, it's pulling something. Is it, <laughs> it's just neat. Look, there's a there's a cow. I love it. We should, we should absolutely uh, go to London and go to the tour mm -hmm. and look at the castle look at hogwarts i would love to see that one of the things they mentioned if i scroll down if you scroll down the article the the links of course are going to be in the show notes um but you can see right here is durham cathedral um that that they help they use to help build this castle up and if you look carefully at parts of this when they were building it i think there's a shot in here that that does oh, have yeah look in the front right there something that looks remarkably similar. So it's 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 such an amazing piece of artwork that they worked on. And just seeing it like this, without even all of the, right. the it, backgrounds and camera work, it's still so amazing. So I saw that and thought, that's that's cool. Why are we bothering with this crazy other, you know, Super Tuesday news and political stuff in the news? We should <laughs> so just look at a castle. Let's look at a castle. Well, being here in America where everything is so young. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's we're true. We're a young country. All our buildings are new. Yes. You look, this one's there. made of brick. <laughs> But you go over there, and there's stuff that is a thousand plus years old. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. We don't have the scope. We don't understand unless we go over there, and and really see it. And the fact that people made it, yeah, you know, unbelievable. So Love that it. that was a great story. Now I'm ready I, for my London tour. Let's go. Okay, well I'll work on that. <laughs> we'll get we'll get going on that piece. Our next story this week. What a view. This is, uh, we do a couple of stories like this every once in a while. They, they pop up. This is one that uh, first is just a blog that everyone should know about. This is from Aaron Space Smithsonian at airspacemag.com. There is out on airspacemag.com. Let's flip over to the website and have a look at this. This particular blog entry is one that was made uh, by Don Pettit. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who is on the International Space Station. So okay. Don is a is an astronaut, and he writes a blog for Air and Space Magazine. From the space station? From the space station. I so need we, to read that. Yeah, so I have in here, this is a story, before we get into the story of what they did in San Antonio, uh, let me flip over to another blog entry that he did that talks about photography from the space station. So he's up there, he's got a camera on the space station, he's holding the camera, and he talks about how fast the Earth is going by. It's going by at 8 kilometers a second. That's 288 miles per minute or wow. 17,300 miles per hour. Now, let's say you have a camera, and with cameras you have a shutter speed. You know, it takes a picture and, and really turned up really high, the shutter speed, you can get as fast as 1 1,000th of a second. Now, on the space station, that means 26 feet of motion went by in that one one thousandth of a second wow so now this becomes difficult because you know if you're taking a picture of something you say you know stay still so you can take your picture it's right. not blurry the earth is constantly moving they don't have a way <laughs> hold on earth please stop moving so it becomes very very much of a challenge for him to first identify something he says if he wants to take a picture of his hometown he's got to plan this out he's got to be there ahead of because it's going to go by really quick he's right. going to miss it and and, he, and even when he gets there, he says it takes a while to get used to how you move the camera along with the earth when you take a picture. He has to start like several states away. So yeah, and be ready and be looking for it because if you miss it, oh, I missed there. Oh, oh there, there it goes. There it goes. There's Cleveland. We'll have to wait a couple days for you know, it to come amazing. back around. This man is an astronaut. He's on the space station. He's obviously not doing this with his iPhone camera. He has a no, very right. sophisticated camera. But he's grappling with the same problem that every person that takes a picture has, and that's right. that lag time. That's right. 
you Same know, thing. it drives me crazy, you're, especially when you're trying to take a picture of like a horse or an animal or something that's moving and you think you got it and then you get like a little hoof in the picture because you missed it. Now take it to the next level. This is the San Antonio Astronomical Astronomical Association. This is an astronomy group that is just an amateur group. They get together, talk about astronomy, check out the space station, and they wanted to flash the space station. Not in the way you're thinking, but they wanted <laughs> I'm like, from Earth. Wow. <laughs> they, they wanted to use a blue laser and see if they could see it from the space station. So this is a one is watt, that safe? one watt blue laser. So this is uh, first a, a type of laser that only puts out type of light. There's no, it's not like you're. It's not going to hurt. Them. It's not like a phaser. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to hurt anybody. It's not going to put your eye out. Okay. Um, but and and in fact, by the time the beam gets all the way up to the space station, it's a kilometer wide. It has scattered. That it has much. scattered that much. Isn't that remarkable? So already that one watt is now distributed across a much larger. So it's much dimmer even than you might expect once it gets up there. So they worked with Don on the space station, sent emails. This took weeks of planning. So they told him they wanted to do oh, this. Oh, yes. And said, can you you want to take the picture? Because it has to be at night. can't be during the day. So when are you going to come around and be on top of San Antonio at night? Uh, we have to figure out from the ground where we're going to point the laser, how we're going to track the space station. We've watched the space station go by. If mm -hmm. you go to heavens-above.com, you can put in your coordinates, and it will tell you when the space station's coming over your head. And it's you, fast. You can go out at night and yeah. watch it go by. In minutes, it goes across the entire uh, view of you that you have of the sky. So they had to work and plan. And this guy can only send emails once, two, three times a day. It's not like they've got a, <laughs> right. a gig. It's like a, he's next door. There's right. no broadband connection to the internet that he has. Everything's offline, and they sync up, and they send data back and forth. And, and but, they, but what they managed to do, if we look at the picture, you can see from the space station in San Antonio. Oh, get out. This tiny blue dot, and they managed to grab it. And he got a picture. And, they, and he got a picture. So not only was did they were they able to coordinate the process, was he able to see it from the space station, but even with those challenges of taking a picture from the space station, he was still able to capture it. That is unbelievable. Isn't that amazing? And it looks like they went out away from the city. Right, so they could see, get away from the lights. Right. So they could see the, the sky and see all the stars. That's got to be one of the coolest photographs ever. Isn't that great? So that, that's quite remarkable. They were at the Lozano Observatory 40 miles north of San Antonio when they did that. That is awesome. So they must have been pretty excited about what they were able to do from, from space, uh, from the Earth to be able to see in space. I thought that was, that was really an awesome thing. And I would, I would have loved, maybe I'll hunt around there. I wonder if there's a video of them doing it on the ground. It will be really interesting to see how they set it up, how they were able to move it. Some, did they say, Fred, hold this and go like this. <laughs> right, I don't know. right, right, right. How'd they do that? So and who got to be the one that that held it? Somebody did. Somebody set it up. Maybe they put it on on like a telescope and, and tracked it. I don't know. How do you even I do that? I would like to know more of that. I will I will I'll look into that. Find out. We'll find out about all of that. Since we're on the topic of space, I thought it would be good to do another cool story about space. What a launch. And this launch, we're talking space shuttle launch. Okay. Now you may have thought that the space shuttle itself was was no longer in operation. I was going to say, I thought we were done with you this. You would be incorrect. The space shuttle is absolutely in operation. And this space <laughs> shuttle launched from Germany. This space no. shuttle, oh yes, this space shuttle launched from Germany. Now we just did one with the Lego man. Oh yes, we did. This now one. Now has a ship. This is one, this is a, a teenager in Romania that got, went mail ordered all of the things you would need to put together a weather balloon and uh, an insulated box with little uh, hand warmers and a camera so the camera wouldn't freeze when it when it went up high and built a little Lego. He thought of everything. He thought of everything. In fact, you can see his list of things here that you would need. Hand warmer, styrofoam, fishing wire, an LED beacon. He has a GPS in there. He was able to... to Look, he writes, keeping it warm. Oh, yeah. At <laughs> negative, negative 50. 50 Celsius. That's right. <laughs> and he was able to send that into the stratosphere just by by sticking it on this and and watching it go. Um, oh, that's incredible, isn't it? So of course I should have I should have pre uh, preloaded this particular video so we could have have seen it in real time. 
Maybe if I... Boy, Lego's getting some good press. Oh, they're not messing around. Off of these enterprise oh, yeah. kids. <laughs> build, build more Lego stuff. We want, we want more. There it is. Let me, let me back up so you can actually see them, see it lifting off. This was the remarkable part so to me. So the camera is attached to the balloon. Right. And, and he's and got it, it positioned in a way so that it looks like the space shuttle is, is floating there behind it. He just used fishing wire. Five there it filaments is. of fish. There it is. It's flying. That is <laughs> awesome. That's just too cool. And it goes up higher and higher and higher. And if I skip ahead to a section that's higher and higher and higher. And now you're starting to see the curve of the earth as it goes way up there. And then then we get into the more more dramatic parts of the... Oh, <laughs> cue the music. There he is. Now, is the camera... How are they getting these pictures? The camera's pointing down from a box. And this, he's got, he literally got balsa wood to hang off the side with this fishing wire on it, with the fishing line on it. Uh, this the is the lowest is being tech. sent back to him? No, it's being recorded live on the camera. So when it fell to earth, he had to find the box. I was going to say, where did it land? 200 kilometers away. <laughs> that, is, I mean, how did he... That is relatively close when you consider it's the entire... Right. I mean... He's in space. Right. He's yeah. way up there. That's awesome. I really want somebody to do one with Barbie. She needs to go to space. Barbie in awesome space? pink airplane. All right. We're putting it out to the <laughs> internet that Barbie needs to go to I space. Think we need to do it. Yep. <laughs> so he, he couldn't launch this in Romania. Why not? Because in Romania, there are these major requirements that you have to go through to launch a weather balloon. Oh. A lot of bureaucracy, it would take 45 days. And he said at the end of it, you, they're not going to do that for a teenager anyway. So, so where'd he go? He went to Germany, which does not have oh. those types of requirements to do this. That was really cool. <laughs> Pretty smart. Pretty smart of him being able to do it. So he went over there. It was right after Christmas. He put it all together. And he launched it, and that's what he got. And in fact, it took him a couple of months to put the video online because his computer's not good at, at doing video editing. He had to go to a friend <laughs> and get the get the. But he found somebody who had the video editor. He, he did it. Next time, just send it to me. I'll edit the whole thing for you. We'll get it online in an instant. There you go. We'll put it out it, there. We will make it work for you. So that's that makes sense to me. So this next one, I tried to to hit a very close to home for you. This next one is what a parody. How is that close to home for oh, me? Oh, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> there is a, um, a Pen University of Pennsylvania Law School was having a symposium on, on the intellectual property and how it relates to copyrights. And as part of the posters that they created, they took the intellectual property symbols of, of these large companies. The iconic, right. Right. And did little things to it, like put a copyright symbol in the middle of it. See, for instance, the LV that's there uh, has a trademark instead of the I LV. I can see that, yes. It has a copyright instead of the little circles there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, I see it. Well, this, of course, these are, this is a, this is a, a symposium. They're discussing the ins and outs of this. And in fact, that wasn't the only one they did. If I flip back to my... Handy dandy view here. Not only was Louis Vuitton in there, but they, they had other ones as well. Let me flip over to the the other website here. And they talk about this. This is directly from the the folks that put this together. Here's another one, for instance, that had the, the polo symbols and the Christian Dior and those types of things. And it's to be used in this educational facility to talk about some of the challenges associated with this, obviously a lot of the things associated with SOPA and some of the, mm -hmm. the uh, things that have been going on in the news lately have been around preventing third parties from using these logos and creating their own content, creating their own purses, fake fake, Which is fashion, a huge problem. Huge right. problem for those particular industries. So this was to discuss it. Well, they got a letter from Louis Vuitton that said, oh. you can't do that with this logo. That is a violation of our copyright, of our intellectual property. And you can't do that. 
now as, as the the reply you'll have to go into this story where they actually put the cease and desist letter in so you can read the one that came from louis vuitton and they were smart enough to put I mean, this is a law school, put their response to it that says you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, that this is exactly why you have the ability to use these things in an educational. This is fair use. That In no way does this poster, is, does anyone think that that's a purse? They do not. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's what I'm thinking. Like, And said, why don't you come to the symposium and talk? And we well, can... it seems to me what they're talking about is helpful. Yes, Right. To the fight that Louis Vuitton is always going through with people who are illegally copying their stuff. Oh, yes. It absolutely is. So they kind of stepped in it. Who knows? It could have been just this. You're going to go How you're gonna go after a poster for a symposium? <laughs> go to the flea market. Well, that was the point they were making. <laughs> that's was, where the problem is. That's exactly the point they were making was this isn't even close to the reason that no. these laws exist. And in, in fact, if you go through the actual laws themselves and you were to apply it to this particular situation, they explain that this, this obviously does not match any of the existing laws dealing with a violation of intellectual property or your trademarks at all. So you should probably come to our symposium where you can explain this. Let us teach you. And we'll teach you. And we'll talk about it. We'll school you. We'll school you on it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this happens all the time. Is when, this a story for me because it deals with Louis Vuitton? It was a story for you because it deals with Louis Vuitton. And, and, and law. And I know you're really into law. With Okay, maybe not. But but there was the LV there. This happens all the time, though, where you have these lawyers. I guess they are either part of the organization or their own on retainer or they're being paid by the hour somehow that are just blasting out cease and desist letters without even considering what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they've, they've destroyed our intellectual property. Let me throw it out. Um, and maybe it's just something lawyers do to say, well, it really isn't, but if I don't complain about it and it somehow manages to be that, I've now covered my, right. I need to at least my things. set a precedent. That's right. That I didn't like it. It's a legal term of that piece. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Those poor lawyers, they're, they're so misunderstood. Not really. Our our last story here is what a lunch. Really? Yeah. That looks like an airplane lunch. Oh, no, it's even better. There is a website called American Lunchroom. And if you've ever wanted to know what's being served in the lunchrooms around America, you simply go to AmericanLunchroom.com. Like, is that like a school lunch? School lunch. This is from, this is lunch okay. number 32, biscuit, mac and cheese, green beans and milk from Jackson, Georgia High School. Shelly submitted it there so you can see exactly what they're having for lunch well now that i see it closer it's not that bad no, it's not that bad got some it's chocolate milk now they've got others in here pepperoni pizza and corn yum the school lunch obviously not giving them silverware because you know it's like an airport can't go can't give those kids that that was at uh the bronx new york private school kelly submitted that this is this looks pretty good actually carrots yeah, broccoli and cauliflower that. i just i just like the idea of going back to my high school days and looking at the veggie Did you salads. Get to buy? I didn't get to buy. Ooh, chicken nuggets and spinach. That looks... <laughs> That's... Some of these not not so good. Perhaps not. That needs a little more color on the plate. There are pages and pages and pages that you can go through now and look at the ravioli, fries, ketchup, milk, and apple. Awesome. From Bronx, New York. I have to admit, I didn't get to buy very often because my mother was like, I'm not paying good money when you have peanut butter here. You know, that was... Oh, well, there you go. But on the days that I did get to buy... Pizza and French fries. Was it? <laughs> That's so unhealthy. Well, you got to do it every once in a while. You got to oh, go it was there. Good. Absolutely. And so sometimes, that, if your friend had extra quarter because it was fifty cents, right? We get like some of those little hostess little cake. Oh, uh, the machine. Oh no, they were just at the cafeteria. Oh. Fifty cents. So she, you know, if she had a quarter and I had a quarter. <laughs> we'd go in half seas, <laughs> half and half. Oh sure, right on. Mm hmm. Got to figure that out. Not, not bad. My my lunches weren't I, they were about exactly what I saw on that website. Some sometimes you have a good day, sometimes not so much. Um, I never liked it when they served shepherd's pie. That was not my favorite lunch day. It's a little mysterious. Ooh, I'm not sure what shepherd it came from. But <laughs> it's not really what I was shooting for. Well, that uh, that brings us to the end of yet another What a Week podcast. If you'd like to see more of 
those show notes we talked about. If you'd like to see previous versions or you'd like to subscribe in your iTunes or your other RSS podcast reader, you can visit our website at whataweekpodcast.com. On Twitter, if you'd like to be notified when we record live or when I post a new episode to iTunes and online, you can follow us at whatweek on Twitter. I'm not, I didn't say anything. Okay, and the email to contact me is james at whataweekpodcast.com. So it's been a week of flying through space, of of lawyers fighting us, and of school lunches. And Louis Vuitton. Don't forget I, that. I think we've covered the bases. And Barbie's going to space. We're going to find that story. As soon as Barbie goes to space, we'll it's absolutely— It's going to be an awesome pink bedazzled airplane. I hope she's in her Jeep. Oh, in the Jeep. That would be awesome. She was going to space in the Jeep. The pink Jeep. Maybe would, she'll have Malibu mm, Barbie with her. That would be perfect. Be heading off to the beach. As the co-pilot. There you go. And if, if that happens or we find any of Barbie or anyone else going to space, we'll absolutely follow that as well. We'll see you next time on What a Week. Goodbye, everybody.